it's a championship edition of the Blitz and the sack walking section, D5 Blue Banner is on the line. Number two, Sonora hosting number five, Escalon at St. Mary's High in Stockton. The Wildcats enter as undefeated Mother Load League champs, while the Cougars, they finished third in the Trans Valley League with a four and two record. Sonora is here after wins over Center and Dixon, and Escalon beat Pacheco, Hillmar, and Sutter to get here. One, two, three! The Wildcats won a section title in 2015, but since then, four straight seasons of losing in the semifinals, the last of which came in 2019 by the hands of Escalon. The Cougars are looking to three-peat they beat rival Hillmar High in 2019 and 2021 for respective D6 and D5 titles. It's time for the Friday Night Highlights. Escalon establishes the run on the opening drive with a Logan Anderson five-yard rush. The quarterback Donovan Roosevelt quickly turns to the pass game, even though Owen Nash can't reel in that one. The next play is gold, Jerry. I tell you, it's gold. Rosevink, he finds Jamin Miller, 54 yards for the touchdown. The junior to junior connection, and the Cougars are leading early. Sonora must respond now, and they start at the 28 yard line. And on third and two, Adam Kernow, he rushes for three yards and a first down. On the very next play, Kernow decides to go through the air, targets a receiver, and misses. Uh, but the flag is thrown, and so the drive stays alive, setting up Audi Peoples. He's gone in a flash for a 30-yard touchdown run. And after an offensive highlight, the Sonora defense gets it done on third and eight. Tyler Sells and Delane Gardner with the nine-yard sack, and that gives Sonora the chance to take the lead, and they do it in five plays. Look at this pass that got lost in the lights, well, that's Chance Pimentel reeling in a 48-yard pass. He's down at the one, and so the quarterback takes it in for himself. And Sonora has its first lead. But I wouldn't count Escalon out, especially because they have Riker Peters. This is a 66-yard run, and he's taken down at the 14-yard line, which takes us to the second quarter and another Peters run. He picks up five, and he's down at the one. And on the next play, he gets the tutty. Peters for the touchdown. It's a tie game, and the Cougars and Wildcats are trading blows like a heavyweight fight. And the Esky defense is here to answer the call. Anderson, he gets a nice tackle on Noah Baker for a loss and forces a punt. And that sets up this beautiful connection. Rosa Vink to Nash, 19 yards from the heavens above, and that's a first down. And Rosa Vink once again looks for Nash. And once again, Nash gets the first down. That's good for 17 yards, and he's down at the 20. But there is an abrupt halt to the drive. Rosa Vink overthrows Anderson, and Cooper Moberg gets the interception. And that leads to a close to four minute drive from Sonora, mostly on the back of Peoples. A nine yard run on third and six, followed by a seven yard run. And he gets seven of these 12 plays including this go-ahead touchdown. Now, before we get into the second half, let's recognize our sponsor, Realtor Michael Rocha. Are you a buyer looking for your perfect home? Or are you a seller looking for top dollar for your home? No matter what your goals are, if you're looking to win in this real estate market, Michael Rocha is the realtor for you. So contact Michael Rocha today at 209-485-5228. You can also find him on Facebook and on Instagram. And big shout out to Main Street Garage in Escalon for sponsoring this episode. Main Street Garage is a Napa Auto Care Center that offers a wide variety of services. Oil changes, alignments, smog checks, brakes, air conditioning. If your car has a problem, Main Street Garage has a solution. Find them at 1906 Main Street and tell owners Mike and Carly Lewis that the Blitz said hello. We've got a slick play by the linebacker to open the second half. Miller with the stick and strip on third and one, but the refs call him down. Leads to a punt, but there's a running into the kicker call, even though it's more like being thrown into the kicker. 
Either way, it's all for naught because Miller has another key stop. Fourth and four at the 45, and it's a TOD. And the Cougars capitalize immediately. A home run hitter, 55 yards, a touchdown pass from Rosa Vink to Nash. Rosa Vink is dropping dimes, and with a touch so money, he should be cashing checks. Great play, but Sonora won't give up. Kernell calls his number, and he gets eight yards on the ground. And that's followed by a pass to Bryce Nicholson. 35 yards down to the eight, and Peoples will punch it in from two yards out. 75 yards in nine plays, and Sonora is back on top. Escalon's turn to respond, and they again turn to Peters, who rips another big run. He's running free for 15 yards. And as we enter the fourth quarter, we get another Peters run, 12 yards, and he lays the hit for the first down. We get an incomplete pass here, but there is a roughing the passer call, and that puts Escalon at the 11. Third down play, and Anderson is on the far side of the field, but no gain. Great stop by Sonora's D, and on fourth and one, they give the ball to Peters, who takes the plunge, and it looks like he's got it down at the one. But what is the spot? He's called short. Escalon fans feel wronged. But you know what they say, the ball don't lie. And it doesn't take long for redemption because Logan Anderson gets the biggest interception of his life. And look at that wall of blockers. This is a 35 yard return with improbable timing. But hey, reverse that real quick because this is the play of the game. And credit to the rush for the pressure. Kurnow hit as he throws and the ball practically falls in Anderson's hands. I can only imagine what he was thinking when he nabbed that interception. From the looks of it, he's probably thinking, damn, I got quite a few blockers ahead of me. And we got to give a shout out to some of these blockers, specifically Nate Krieger and Javier Gutierrez. This is championship magic in full effect, and a new hope is born for Escalon. 28 to 28 with less than four minutes to play. But Sonora responds by scoring in three with the help of a thrilling 86 yard touchdown run from Nicholson. He turned a third and seven into a touchdown and there's yet another lead change. But you won't believe it. It's like a movie script, a botched snap on the PAT. Pile on the drama, it's a six point game. And the Cougars take over at the 20 and trigger the air raid sirens. Rosevink is on the deck. This is a 43 yard pass to Nash. It's double coverage, but guess what? Ty goes to runner. And that's followed by a 12 yard pass to Anderson on the far side of the field. And we're now under a minute and Peters is gonna get a 10 yard rush on third and three, very important. Rosevink looking to keep the drive alive and he finds Talon Reader, 18 yards and he's out of bounds. And with 37 seconds left, Rosie rolls to his left. He lets it fly and he finds Nash in the back of the end zone over a defender. That's an 18 yard touchdown. And this is improbable. It's amazing. It's thrilling. My heart is racing. Ryder puts the extra point through and the Wildcats now need a miracle. What are they gonna do? Trick play, a hook and ladder. Pimentel to Jared Franklin for six yards. And with eight seconds, they're gonna hand the ball off to Peoples. Eight yards and a first down. But as time expires, the pass falls incomplete. And just like that, Esky High has the three P. It's amazing. It's 
feels awesome. I don't know how to act right now. I've been here two other times, my freshman year and last year, and nothing's felt like this before. We've never had back to back to back, and that was the first time in history we've ever done that, and we've, we've had plenty of opportunities to do it. But I mean, to come back to back, winning it my sophomore year and not winning it my junior year feels great, and we just gotta come on. We didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, fulfill the season last year with going to NorCal. You know, we lost, we got cut short, but um, this year we have, to, we have to go all the way. I came into high school, wanted to win stuff like this, and we finally accomplished it, man. Three years in a row, we went out and we did it, man. We accomplished what we said we wanted to do, but the real goal is we're not done. We are not done, we're gonna keep on going. We did have a rough go in league a little bit. We didn't play our best, um, but after, the, after that loss against Hillmar and Houston, our team knew we needed to win out, turn it around, and we'd be right back here at St. Mary's, and that's what we did. We turned it around, starting from our O-line, down to our defense, everywhere kicking. I don't think our kickers missed more than two kicks in the past three or four games. The people that didn't believe in us, stay not believing in us because we're going to go all the way with this. Owen Nash, Riker Peters, uh, two seniors, made some great plays tonight when they needed to. Um, everybody did. Our O-line did an amazing job. They have a, Sonora has a great O-line and D-line and um, our O-line just stuck it through and we did a great job. Well, whenever I get in that huddle, I always tell my line something. I always tell them, let's go. Let's just, I always try to motivate them so they know that I'm, that I'm going to make the plays as long as they are making the plays for me. And none of this would have been done without our line. My line's a great line, and they, you know, they held their own against those kids. I was supposed to just run an MOR, which is a mandatory outside release, and I was supposed to run the safety off because we had an out over here that we were supposed to hit. And Donovan, he's been my quarterback since I was in seventh grade. He just trusts me, and he just lobbed it up, and I saw it in the air. I just knew it was to, it was mine. At one point, I think our whole team felt like we were going to lose, and then when number five got that pick six, that was really the, the changer. And when they scored, it was it, it was it was just the craziest thing ever. Our momentum died, but then we went out there on offense, started making big plays, and we got it all right back. I kind of didn't even know what drop I was supposed to go in, so I kind of just dropped back into coverage. And I saw this open receiver. Um, then the ball kind of came right to me, and my blockers did the rest from there. We knew it was going to be a dogfight, and we didn't expect them to pass as much as they did. We knew that they were a ground and pound team, but we were ready for both. They got us on some plays, but we came back. We fought through adversity, like we've said all year, and we just came out on top. My brother, he was a senior in 2019 when we won state, and so I'm trying to just be like, be just like him. But uh, this is great. This is amazing, and like we've been, all of our guys have been playing together since we were kids like this is it's a brotherhood especially it's amazing slugfest shootout war of attrition whatever you want to call it that was a great game and that marks the third consecutive section title that escalon has won and that the blitz has covered huge shout out to cougar nation congratulations on yet another blue banner and congratulations to quarterback Donovan Rosavink, a junior, and he already has two championships under his belt. He finished the game nine for 16 for 248 yards, three touchdowns and one interception. And a majority of those passes, including the game winner, found Owen Nash. He had six receptions, 163 yards and two touchdowns. As for the run game, Riker Peters led the charge with 15 carries, 140 yards, and one touchdown. As for the defensive unit, so many moving parts that contributed to the win, but off the top, I gotta give shout outs to Logan Anderson and Jamin Miller. Heading into this matchup, Escalon outscored its previous three playoff opponents, 120 to 30. And so it shouldn't really be a surprise that the defensive unit was a huge part of this win. And boy, did the Cougar defense have to work because Sonora's offense was hitting them with a plethora of players. The quarterback, Adam Cornow, he went six for 13 for 112 passing yards and one interception. And if you add in his rushing yards, he breaks 150. Decent numbers for the quarterback considering Sonora primarily ran the ball. Audi Peoples, 19 carries for 95 yards and three touchdowns. And then we've got Bryce Nicholson, seven carries, 121 yards and one touchdown. And if you add his 58 receiving yards, he had a total of 179 yards. Escalon is now preparing for a home game 
against Pleasant Valley High in the Division IV AA bracket of the CIF State Bowl Championship. Best of luck to Escalon, and who knows? There may be yet another Cougar episode in store for the Blitz. As for what lies ahead next week, we're taking a trip to the Division V AA bracket where Rippin' Christian is facing Houston High. That's right, the D7 and D6 section champions are facing off and we've covered both of these teams on this season of the Blitz. So no matter what, one local team is advancing next week. Be sure to stay up to date with all of the Blitz and Turlock Journal football coverage at turlockjournal.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter if you follow at Turlock Journal. So until next week, I'm Frankie Tovar. Thank you for watching the Blitz.